Hey guys, welcome to the very first ever Bill with Joe video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make these awesome mid-century modern looking side tables. I hope that the tutorial is easy enough that you can follow along, maybe try something similar for yourself. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Ashley has a ton of really awesome videos coming out that she's been working so hard on. It wouldn't be worth it without an audience like you to support that. So thank you guys so much. Enjoy the video. Okay, so I have all my material marked out for the top and the bottom, the sides, and then this is for the other side table, and then these are for the legs. I'm going to be cutting the base for the feet to go in. It doesn't really make sense when I say it, but you'll see it and it'll make sense when it all comes together. So I'm cutting 11 inch pieces of board and it's basically just going to go on the base of the side table to hold the feet in and it's going to go between each foot. Okay, so all the boards that we just cut are all at a 90 degree angle. So the next ones that we have to cut need to be at a seven degree angle because our legs are at an angle to get that mid-century modern look. So the holders on the inside have to be at an angle as well. Like I said, it'll make more sense when you see it, but it'll all come together. So seven degrees isn't that much. I don't know if you can see in the video, but in comparison to straight one, you can tell that it's seven degrees. So the, the pocket holes here go into the stand and the pocket go, holes here go into the leg. Now I'm going to cut the legs for the side tables. All these are going to be at the same 7 degree angle that we did the base piece at so that the legs kind of stick out just a little bit from the table because mid-century modern furniture has the skinny legs that stick out like that. So I cut one of the legs and I'm going to use it to measure out each one so that they are all the same length because we don't want a wobbly table. Now I've drawn this diagonal line on the legs so that they can be cut to their final form. It was a little bit tricky to get this cut right, so I used a circular saw to start it and this clamp system, and then once it makes it to the end, like that, I take that piece and move it over to the miter saw, like you'll see. And here we are at the miter saw. So I had to practice my technique with this. Um, as you can see, I make a relief cut at the front and then uh, do the full cut in the middle to come out with my piece, or else something like this could happen. So yeah, I mean the piece came out okay, but I definitely wouldn't recommend doing it that way because kickback is not fun. One last time, here's the right way to do it. Okay, so I got all these legs cut and now I've clamped them together so that I can sand them down and get them somewhat even because they are not perfect. Now we can finally start putting these bad boys together. No matter how straight your legs are, this part is so crucial to making sure that your table doesn't wobble. There was a few different tricks that I tried. Definitely doing it on a flat surface is important. The most important thing about putting in this top screw is making sure that it's in line with the top of the leg. most important part about putting in this second screw closer to the bottom is 
that the legs are parallel with each other. So when I put in the second screw, I just hold down the legs together and make sure that they're both flat on the surface and then put that screw in so that it's all held together. These two are a little bit of a bad example for that because they're only screwing into one leg so you can't really even out the legs. But the next one is a good example. See here how my hands are on both of the legs, making sure that they are touching the table while I'm screwing it in. Ta-da! The legs are finished. Okay, okay, it's time to do the side table box now. Don't ask me why I'm doing woodworking in my kitchen. It was minus 30 outside and business never sleeps. So now it's time to glue up our side table box. Um, just glue it and clamp it. <laughs> I found that it gave me a good enough amount of stability and I'm not worried that it's gonna fall apart or anything like that. So why not just make your life easier and glue it. Let's do it. So when you're doing this, you want to pick a front side, basically just a side that looks the best, the cleanest cuts, because even just getting it from whatever retailer you choose to buy your wood at, um, it can come with cracks like this one in the front, see? And I want a clean edge on my front, so I have something that looks more square. So the first thing I do is just to line it up and then dump some glue on there and get these squared up. So well, now I'm going to give this like 10 or 15 minutes to set and then I'm going to glue the top on and clamp it up so it's nice and tight. So it's been like 10 minutes and as you can see these aren't going nowhere. But they're still wet enough that it can be tighter to the bottom. Now it's time to clamp and glue the top on. So this is on the top of the board. And this is on the bottom. So I'm just gonna take the better of the two because I know that this can be sanded out. I'll put the other one on the bottom. I'm gonna use my two trigger clamps on the front so that it's nice and tight. My hack for a belt clamp is actually just like a strap that you would put on your car for loading stuff on the roof. I don't know how I came up with this idea. I think I saw it on an Instagram page. So shout out to whoever that was. Okay, we're all glued up. Now it's just to wait for probably an hour and take all these clamps off, move on to the next one. I would say the hardest part for sure was making sure the seven degree angle was going the right direction as the diagonal cut. But here we are with the finished side tables and I'm actually super happy with how they turned out. In the end, I ended up just putting a piece of cardboard on the back. You see it's closed in on the back of the side table. So 
yeah um thank you guys so much for watching this video and what am i supposed to say this is if you like these type of videos give it a thumbs up don't forget to, to comment down below and subscribe and if you're not subscribed why aren't you why aren't you subscribed period comment down below what you want to see what you liked about this diy and if you try it yourself i'd love to see what you guys come up with thanks for watching build with joe on interior dot break Catch you later.